Hi welcome back to History Recaps. What do you see when you see this dollar bill? You probably see the same thing as most people see. Money. And everybody loves money. Right? But behind this dollar bill is a dark story. One president and over 1,200 human bones. Today we will go deep in a story that sounds so bizarre by today's standards. But first big, thanks to everybody who subscribed to my channel the last days. You guys are the best. Nearly 225 years later, when the house was run down and on the verge of collapse, a group called the Friends of Benjamin Franklin House decided to renovate the building and turn it into a museum honoring one of America's founding fathers. Work began, but just a month after the renovation, a construction worker named Jim Field made an amazing discovery in the windowless basement, a human femur protruded from a pit filled with dirt. After further excavations, with the help of the London police, more than 1,200 more bones, all dated about 200 years ago, were discovered in this one meter wide and one meter deep pit. This raises the question of what human bones did in Ben Franklin's home. Was one of our honored American heroes also the first serial killer in the United States? The short answer to this last question we will find out now. Mr. Franklin was a lot of things, but murderer wasn't one of them. After the discovery, the friends of Ben caught up with Dr. Simon Hilson and his team from the London Institute of Archaeology at University College London. After a little research and analysis of the remains, they soon came to the conclusion that the bones once belonged to William Hewson, a pioneer of anatomy and father of hematology, the study of blood and blood diseases. How did the bones end up in Ben Franklin's basement? During his studies at the University of Edinburgh in 1761-62, the same university where Arthur Conan Doyle served as an employee for Joseph Bell a little over a hundred years later, with Bell becoming one of the people on whom the character of Sherlock Holmes was based, William Hewson attracted the attention of Scottish scientists and surgeons, the Hunter brothers. The brothers eventually named Hewson as an assistant and partner in their anatomy school, which allowed him to continue his blood test. In a famous experiment before the Royal Society in 1770, Hewson used the flow of mercury through a turtle to show how blood moves through the lymphatic system. This earned him great praise, the election to the Royal Society and the Copley Medal, outstanding achievements in the physical and biological sciences. It also won a friend and admirer in Ben Franklin. On July 10, 1770, Hewson married Mary Stevenson, a female acquaintance of Franklin and the daughter of Franklin's landlady at 36 Craven. Later that year, the Hunter brothers suggested ending their partnership with Hewson. According to PBS, it was because Hewson no longer lived in school. Be that as it may, Hewson wanted him to participate in all the experiments he had done during his work. The Hunter brothers said no. This led to a rift between great scientists that Franklin tried to mediate. Franklin said at the time, I should think that it would not be a problem to hear their complaints if I had the least benefit in dealing with their differences. However, since this was not likely, I could only wish, as I had a respect for both of them, that they would go as quietly as possible to the end of their term of office, as this would be most attributable to both. After the partnership was broken, Franklin offered to let Hewson live in 36 Craven and open his own anatomy school there. He accepted and his school was officially opened in September 1772 at Ben Franklin's residence. Among the bones found at 36 Craven in 1998 were the remains of 15 different people, adults and children. They all showed sectional stamps made with surgical instruments of the 18th century. A femoral bone was found, which was neatly severed and was probably used to demonstrate the correct amputation method. Skull fragments showed boreholes, which were probably made with a trepany machine. This is a pre-industrial revolution, though rarely carried out today, in which holes were drilled into the skull to reduce pressure on the brain. In addition, excavators found remains of various animal species, horses, cows, pigs and even a turtle spine. It was clear that these remains were used for medical and scientific studies. Why didn't Hewson dispose of them properly? Why did he hide so much what he did? And where do these human remains come from? Throughout the Middle Ages and until the late 16th century, sections and autopsies were completely illegal in England due to the lack of understanding of medical necessity associated with religious objections. From the 17th century, this gradually changed, as autonomous theaters were established in many European cities, where doctors and students could get to know the human body. These became huge spectacles and were difficult to reach. Throughout the Middle Ages and until the late 16th century, sections and autopsies were completely illegal in England due to the lack of understanding of medical necessity associated with religious objections. In other words, dissection became part of the sentence. 
However, the dismantling was only for those who had already planned their demise by the state. With the growth of anatomy schools, the first official one opened at Penn University in 1745, the school founded by Ben Franklin, the demand for carcasses increased. The number of convicted offenders executed would in no way meet the need for dismountable posts. Doctors, scientists and surgeons did then small practices. In some cases, the lack of corpses for medical professionals in Europe and America has even led to murder being committed to sell the bodies to medical professionals. While it has not been proven that William Hewson resorted to grave robberies, and he certainly did not murder anyone, it seems likely, given the range and amounts of bones he had, that he paid grave robbers for corpses if not the act itself. In fact, the friends of Benjamin Franklin House speculate that Hewson's bodies came from resurrectors, body snatchers who had shipped their goods along the Thames under the cover of night. Disposing of the bodies anywhere but in a basement pit risked being caught for illegal dissection and possible grave robbery. All in the name of science. To the extent that Franklin himself was involved in these illegal sections and the school of anatomy, there is no evidence in any direction. It is even possible that Franklin had no idea that technical criminal acts were committed in the school of the house, although this seems a bit boring, provided he knew that Hewson had done his job, and no doubt he was aware of the resurrection practices of physicians with the bodies they needed for their work. That is, Franklin was often in and out, and even when he was in London, he sometimes stayed in another house owned by the same landlady. Perhaps, at least, he was not present at the transactions. We'll probably never know. Although the means by which Hewson had acquired at least some of the bodies were probably illegal, his work was important. From 1772 until his death two years later, William Hewson made some discoveries related to the human body. He was the first person to observe the production of lymphocytes in the thymus and spleen. He was the first to clearly describe the three components of blood, red blood cells, white blood cells and plasma. He correctly reported that red blood cells were disc-shaped, unlike his contemporaries, who considered the cell to be spherical. Unfortunately, Hewson's life came to a tragic end. He fell ill with septicemia, ironically enough, a severe severe blood infection, from a dissection wound in 1774 and died. As Franklin said in a letter to his wife, Our family here is in great need. Poor Mrs. Hewson has lost her husband and Mrs. Stevenson has lost her son-in-law. He died last Sunday morning from a fever that stunned the skills of our best doctors. He was an excellent young man, brilliant, hardworking, useful and very popular by all that knew him. He had just grown up in a profitable, growing company with the best prospects for a young family. Today, the Benjamin Franklin House at 36 Craven in London is open to the public as a museum. It is the last remnant of the house of the man himself. William Hewson's dissecting bones can currently be seen in the seminar room of the house. Thanks to everybody who subscribed to my channel in the last days. If you like this video, please subscribe, like and hit the bell button.